The objective of this lesson is to become familiar with a few very basic ideas of mechanical forces with partial dentures. The RPD is a mechanical device operating in a dynamic environment. Under an applied load, the partial denture will move. Not only is this undesirable from the viewpoint of the patient, it has unintended consequences for the supporting structures. The RPD should be designed to limit movement and direct forces, to improve comfort and preserve teeth, soft tissue, and bone. The RPD is a mechanical device that exerts lever forces. It may also involve the use of inclined planes. Wedges are also simple machines that may be very detrimental. Levers are of three types. In RPD, first and second class levers may be found in tooth tissue borne partial dentures. When present, levers must be managed to work advantageously, or at least not detrimentally. The slide demonstrates examples. The third class lever is not commonly found in RPD. The first class lever is exemplified by the seesaw. Of course, levers are used to magnify forces across the fulcrum. The effort and resistance move opposite each other. The second class lever is exemplified by a wheelbarrow. Here, the effort and resistance move in the same direction. Inclined planes are simple machines that are used to push heavy objects up a slope. Opposing inclined planes appear in many RPD designs and can cause unwanted tooth movement. The forces of the inclined plane may be redirected more effectively down the long axis of the tooth by incorporating a stop or rest to limit the movement of the two planes. Wedges inadvertently created may be damaging to the teeth creating areas of fluid impaction, inflammation, bone resorption and eventual tooth loss. Correct preparation design will prevent wedging. In this example, the orientation and correct preparation of the rests will draw the teeth together, rather than push them apart. Forces are directed down the long axis. RPD movement occurs in three planes, managing these movements with good design increases patient comfort, while reducing stress to the supporting tissues. An understanding of these three basic movements can simplify the study of partial dentures. The partial denture exists in a dynamic environment under the influence of the structures of the oral cavity. The first movement in the horizontal plane is referred to as fish tailing. Buccal lingual movement of the partial denture is both traumatic to the abutment teeth as well as the residual ridge. Stabilizing components may be added to the partial denture to resist this type of movement. Movement in the frontal plane may be described as a rotation about a longitudinal axis through the mandible. This movement is resisted by maximally extending the major connector around the arch, having a rigid major connector, and components that are well adapted to their supporting structures. The third motion, rotation in the sagittal plane, is described as rotation about the fulcrum line. This typically is the most obvious that may be noticed, although all of these movements may involve low magnitude forces, which are very destructive over time. Rotation about the fulcrum is minimized by ensuring that indirect retention is planned, and that well adapted bases are provided. Teeth are designed to best withstand forces directed down the long axis. Important considerations of force are magnitude, duration, direction, and frequency. In a healthy tooth, compressive forces create tension in the PDL and bone. Bone is positively stimulated. Excessive lateral force applied to the tooth may result in mobility and bone loss. When lateral force is applied, rotation about the horizontal axis of rotation causes tipping displacement of the tooth. The further the force is away from the horizontal axis of rotation, the greater the displacement. This is referred to as the fence post effect. 
to limit displacement of the tooth due to the fence post effect, clasps should be designed with rigid bracing in the middle third of the tooth. Retention is found in the gingival third. Edentulous areas are subjected to compression, causing resorption. Forces of compression are spread throughout the supporting structures, by using a broad denture base, to prevent overstressing one small area. Stress equals force per unit area. This is referred to as the snowshoe effect. The diagram illustrates wedging of the teeth, due to the absence of positive rest seats. Wedging is prevented by using rests in correctly shaped rest seats. Fishtailing is side-to-side -side movement of the RPD in the horizontal plane. Vertical bracing components applied to the lingual surface of the teeth may reduce this movement. Rocking about the fulcrum line should be avoided by ensuring that the base is well adapted, and the RPD extends anteriorly to a well-formed rest. That is, the indirect retainer. Rotation about the longitudinal axis may result from a flexible major connector. Imagine how the RPD would be destabilized by cutting through the lingual bar. You should be able to apply a basic understanding of simple machines to produce a logical design to minimize stress to the abutments and supporting tissues.